Well, good morning, Columbia United Church of Christ. Um, we are here for another chancel chat, and it is uh, Wednesday, April 29th, 2020. And we are here in the chancel at Columbia United Church of Christ. And we are looking today at Acts chapter 6. <clears throat> so Acts chapter 6 reads, Now in those days, when the disciples were increasing in number, the Hellenists complained against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution of food. And the twelve called together the whole community of the disciples and said, It is not right. <clears throat> It is not right that we should neglect the word of God in order to keep accounts. Therefore, friends, select among yourselves seven men of good standing, full of the spirit and of wisdom, whom we may appoint to this task, while we, for our part, will devote ourselves to prayer and to serving the word. What they said pleased the whole community, and they chose Stephen, a man full of faith and the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenius, and Nicholas, a proselytite of Antioch. They had these men stand before the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of God continued to spread. The number of the disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And I'm going to stop there in Acts 6. <clears throat> this is a short chapter, but the rest of that chapter really goes with chapter 7. So I'm going to stop there, and we'll continue those other verses tomorrow. This uh, relatively short chapter of Acts is an important one, because those seven verses kind of sets the tone for what's going to be happening throughout the entirety of the rest of the book of Acts, a tone of radical inclusion. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> For the first five chapters of Acts, we have been reading about how the disciples spread the Jesus movement. <clears throat> which was intended to be a movement within Judaism, not an entirely separate religion. <clears throat> That's allergies, not coronavirus. <clears throat> I'm going to start that over again. <clears throat> For the first five chapters of Acts, we've been reading about how the disciples spread the Jesus movement, which was intended to be <clears throat> a movement within Judaism, not an entirely separate religion. The Essenes and the Sadducees were sects of Judaism with very different, different views concerning the Mosaic laws, the understanding of salvation, and the Messianic ideal. When the followers of Jesus began the Jesus movement, their intention was to also be a sect within Judaism, to bring about reformation within Judaism, not to break away from Judaism altogether and start an entirely new religion. So this is what we see happening in Acts chapters 1 through 5, good Jewish apostles working within Judaism to bring reformation to Judaism. In doing so, they amass thousands of followers to their Jesus movement cause. But now here, in chapter 6, we are starting to see signs of radical inclusion being offered to people who are not entirely Jewish. We have the case of the Hellenists, an outside group that was considered inferior by good Jewish orthodoxy. Hellenistic Jews were a group that was neither Jew nor Gentile, but something in between. They were Jewish people who were displaced during the conquest of Alexander the Great during the fourth, in the 4th century BC. During that time, many Jewish people were scattered, settling, some settling in the cities of Alexandria in Egypt and Antioch in Syria. They maintained their Jewish faith while adopting a Hellenistic culture and learning their language. They blended Hellenistic culture with Jewish faith and wound up with a syncretic understanding of both Hellenism and Judaism that was very accepting of both. Over the centuries, some of these descendants of these Hellenistic Jews returned to Jerusalem, but they were not fully accepted by the Orthodox Jewish culture. They were seen as outsiders, 
half-breeds, accepted by nobody, sort of like the Samaritans, but not quite as offensive. Hellenistic Jews were accepted, but certainly not affirmed by the Jewish population at large. But there were many Hellenistic Jews living in Jerusalem, and when they left widows behind, those widows were sometimes disregarded. Jewish widows, good Orthodox Jewish widows, were cared for due to the Levitical codes they were bound to follow. But the widows of Hellenistic Jews were not included in that covenant. They were excluded because of who they were. They were excluded because of how they were born. Peter and the other apostles did not harbor any ill will towards the Hellenistic Jews, but they never considered the plight these excluded members of society endured. They just did not understand their situation in life because they never took the time to study the issues of the Hellenistic Jews and to understand their situation. Peter and the other apostles enjoyed a certain privilege as the dominant culture of their religion, and they never even had to consider the issues that the Hellenistic Jews, especially their widows, must endure. A Hellenistic Jew had to endure multiple a Hellenistic Jew widow had to endure multiple layers of oppression. She was oppressed because she was a Hellenistic Jew, she was oppressed because she was a woman, and she was further oppressed because she was a widow. It is said today in our world that a gay black woman is the most oppressed in our society because she has three layers of oppression. She's, a, she's oppressed because she's gay, she's oppressed because she's black, and she's oppressed because she's a woman. Well, the Hellenistic Jewish widow that we heard about today in Act 6 is in that same boat. But Peter and the others heard the cries of this oppressed woman and addressed them, these oppressed women, and addressed them. Peter says, it is not right that we should neglect the word of God because we are keeping accounts, meaning we should not be holding oppressions against one another, keeping us from loving as God calls us to love. We should not be allowing cultural constraints to keep God's love in check. God's love is for everyone, no matter who they are or where they are on life's journey. Well, Peter didn't really say that last part, but that's kind of the wisdom of Peter's intent here. So Peter and the other apostles made a decision here in Act 6 to form a committee who would look at the issue of inclusion and act on it. That committee, consisting of the names we heard here uh, in verse 5, Stephen, Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas, was the first inclusion and affirmation ministry team. They made it their mission to spread the word of God to the Hellenistic Jews, not only by word, but also by deed, feeding their widows and caring for their poor. Verse 7 tells us that the word of God continued to spread. The number of disciples increased greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. They acted in inclusion in God's world, and God's ministry began to grow. This theme of inclusion continues to grow in the book of Acts. Today they are sharing the word with Hellenistic Jews. Soon they will be sharing it with the Ethiopian eunuch, and then coming up in chapters 9 and 10 with Cornelius and his army, a contingent of hundreds of Roman soldiers, Gentiles, their wives and their families. The word of God we see here is no longer just for Orthodox Jews. The actions of the apostles are beginning to tell us the word of God is for everyone, no matter who they are or where they are on life's journey. In our world, this is a challenge for us, too. We often want to keep the word of God only to ourselves or to others who look like us, act like us, or behave like us. But God's word is for everyone, and we must express that in the way we live our lives. We are called not just to, express, accept, to, not just to accept diversity, we are called to encourage and affirm and affirm diversity in our world. When we can look at all of God's children and affirm them as beloved and valued children of God, no matter who they are or where they are on life's journey, then we are living into the wisdom of Acts 6 and the entirety of the actions of the apostles. Let us pray. Creator God, in this time of coronavirus and social isolation, it's so easy to lash out against our neighbor because we don't agree with them because of the way they are doing this or doing that. 
But dear God, help us to take the wisdom of the book of Acts into our hearts, this Acts chapter 6, when we see radical inclusion of all people and acceptance of diverse understandings of faith. Help us, dear God, to accept and affirm each one that we might be able to continue to live more fully as your children, expressing and sharing your word and letting your wisdom bring everyone to the table to love one another. We thank you, dear God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, friends. Um, we'll see you tomorrow for Chancel Chat. Chancel Chat, And don't forget, we have our book study coming up at noon. I sent out a Zoom link, Zoom link a little bit ago, so I hope you will join us for that. Thank you, and God bless.